could sell it next semester. This Best is, of A&P 2 with is, Dr. This Gary. This is going to be the one that gets the most hits, I think, yeah. on my YouTube channel. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. ready. I've been ready. Okay, cut. Vascular man, vascular circuits, arterial side. It's going to take and be an ascending aorta, arch of the aorta, with a brachiocephalic trunk coming off of it, with a left common carotid, with a left subclavian taking and coming from the arch. And then we descend through the thoracic area, we descend through the abdominal area to the level of the iliac crest, where it bifurcates into the common iliac. Let's go back and pick up the left subclavian artery, and then we get to the axilla armpit. We have a section that is the axillary artery. We proceed down through the arm in parallel with the humerus as the brachial artery, and then we move into the forearm. And when we're on the, in anatomical position, when we're on the side with the radial bone, we have a radial artery. And then on the other side, the medial side, we have an ulna artery. And that proceeds into the palm. We have a superficial and a deep palmar arch and it proceeds into the respective digits of the hand as digital arteries. When we take and look at the lower extremity, again, at that bifurcation, common iliac, and it branches into an internal iliac and an external iliac, and then it crosses into the thigh and becomes the femoral as it parallels the <coughs> femur. And we get to the back of the knee where we have that depression where we flex. And that's the popliteal fossa, so that's the popliteal artery. And then we get down into the leg below the knee where we have the medial large tibia and lateral much smaller fibula. We have three arteries, so the distribution is the big bone medial gets two arteries, one in front, one posterior an anterior tibial artery, and a posterior tibial artery. And then lateral to it, in parallel with the fibula, is going to be a fibula artery, or the former name still being used, perineal artery. The anterior tibial, when it comes out onto the dorsum of the foot, takes and presents itself as the dorsalis pedis artery. On the venous side, we know that the deep veins the deep veins are going to be the same as the arteries. So we start down here with these deep veins and go in the direction of the blood flow. So the vein laterally is the radial vein. Vein medial is going to take and be the ulna vein. And when we're near the humerus, it's going to be also the brachial vein. Come by the axillary area, axillary artery. Come under the clavicle, subclavian artery, and then we come into a brachiocephalic vein. We do have two brachiocephalic veins, one brachiocephalic artery. <clears throat> and we will take and do the superficial veins as we proceed just under the skin. On the anterior side of the forearm, we're going to take and see a cephalic vein. On the medial side, coming through the forearm and into the arm, Dumping into the other end of the deep vein, axillary, axillary vein, <clears throat> we're going to have the basilic vein. In between them, in the middle, before you get to the arm, a median, anti-brachial. And then we also have in this depression where we bend the elbow, the median cubital vein, so commonly used for venipuncture. Now, in the abdominal area, one has to take and <coughs> be aware of the vessels that supply major digestive structures like the liver. We have over here to this left side, we have the spleen, and they do not put the stomach in because its proper anatomical position would obscure the vessels coming off the aorta. So they put the vasculature wires in, but not the organ. So we look up underneath that, and right from the aorta, 
we see a small little piece emanating that splits into three arteries, a hepatic artery, a splenic artery, and a left gastric artery. The trunk that gave rise to these three would take and be the celiac trunk, celiac trunk, just as you punch through the diaphragm, we get this one piece, splits into three, supplying liver, spleen, stomach. Now, we have to supply the small intestine, which is going to be exiting the stomach, that then is going to be leading into the large intestine. So we're going to have a single branch of the aorta to take and supply the mesenteries of the small intestine. So we have a superior mesenteric branch. To supply the majority of the colon, we're going to have an inferior mesenteric branch. Since that's further down in the abdominal pelvic cavity, the vessel is a little further down than the one that supplies the small intestine. We can backtrack here and see that bilaterally we have the kidneys with their blood supply coming from the renal arteries bilaterally, their vas vascular venous supply being the renal vein. And then we can also see the gonadal arteries uh, left here as non-gender differentiated, not testicular or ovarian, but as gonadal arteries bilaterally. Mm.